Silver and Black Show, everybody. Amber Theo Harris along with James Jones. Happy New Year. Hope everybody had a wonderful holiday season. Now we look forward to on New Year's Day. It will be the Raiders taking on the 49ers at Allegiant Stadium in week 17. But uh, this week, JJ, it's it. Yeah. It definitely started uh, on, on a rough note with Derek Carr not being the starter going forward. It was announced uh, by Coach McDaniels. And so you played with them. Your, your reaction to that? Yeah, my reaction, I mean, I was hurt, to be honest with you, because, number one, I know the hard work that he puts into the game. And not only that, man, he's been a Raider since day one, got drafted to the Raiders, has a bunch of records here. But not only that. He was always available. When Derek Carr needed to be available, he was always available. So I was hurt a little bit, but I think it's something that had to be done. Yeah, so we won't play the final two games of the season. We're going to see Jarrett Stidham uh, get the start instead. But when you look at how many close games there were, this could be such a different situation right now. They could be sitting in a playoff position if just one or two of those close games went the Raiders' way, but that is not the situation. And this has been a polarizing topic with Raider Nation. It's either people are glad to move on from Derek Carr based on the recent play, especially the play in Pittsburgh on Christmas Eve, or they remember what he's done for the organization, stabilizing the organization after uh, the Silver and Black didn't have a starting quarterback legitimately since yeah. Rich Gannon. So you have to remember what he has done. But this is what it was this season. You know, 14th in yards per game, 8th in touchdowns, but in interceptions, that is kind of the glaring number. Yeah. A lot of mistakes, leads the league in interceptions, and is second to last in completion percentage. And so, uh, Derek Carr will not be with the team over the next two weeks. We don't know how that story will end. Josh McDaniels say, uh, said there is not a finality to this, but it surely feels like it. And in the meantime, the Raiders are going to get a look at Jared Stidham and uh, the young quarterbacks. And so, Congratulations to him. His first start uh, in the NFL will be against the number one defense in the NFL against the 49ers. And, and there's the resume. He comes over from the Patriots. He was a fourth round pick back in 2019. And so Josh McDaniels, uh, Dave Ziegler knew him very well, brought him over to be the backup here. And uh, he's had eight appearances. He's just never started in the NFL. This is a, this is a tall task, yeah. uh, needless yeah. to say, for him. You know, uh, rest in peace to my mother-in-law, but. She she used to call me before every game, right? For nine straight years, and she used to say, show them what you're working with, <laughs> right? <laughs> they so, go out there. Hey, I don't care who going out there, yeah. right? You going up against the number one defense in football, the Niners is the, the hottest team in football right now, playing extremely well, won their last eight games, right? You're comfortable with this offense. You've been in this offense. You've been in this system. You've been with Coach McDaniels. Go out there and show the world what you got. And you have a really good opportunity against a really good opponent to say, I can be that guy. Yeah, a lot this of great is your players opportunity. started with an opportunity. There was a guy by the name of Tom Brady that was a six-round pick mm -hmm. that got an opportunity uh, about 20 years ago. And, and Brett Favre. Is history. And Brett Favre, the rest is history. Down, yeah. So uh, here is what Jared Stidham had to say about getting his first NFL start. Yeah, I mean, obviously, you know, you, you dream of playing in the NFL, you know, as, as a kid and, um, and and to start a game, you know, in the NFL, it's a, you know, dream come true. But at the same time, um, I've been preparing, you know, since my rookie year, I, I've tried to prepare the same every single week, uh, whether I was the backup or the starter. Um, obviously, obviously, I've gotten to learn under a bunch of a, a bunch of really good guys, uh, players, coaches. So I've always tried to treat treat the weeks the same um, and it's no different no different this week all right so he has prepared as if he is a starter for the past four years and now he gets the opportunity yeah, on the yeah. other side yeah. there is a rookie quarterback that is making some noise mm. in the nfl it's not trey lance mm. it's not jimmy g it's the third string quarterback Ooh. mr irrelevant the last man. pick in the draft yeah. brock purdy has played the last three games for the 49ers and man has he injected some life into this offense look where he ranks since week 14 amongst quarterbacks in the NFL. And the most dangerous stat there is the passes of 25 plus yards. He leads the NFL and most of them have been going to George Kittle. We'll talk about that in a minute, but that has been a dangerous duo. Also the number one quarterback rating in the NFL for Brock Purdy. So what have you seen from this, this young man in just three games? Well, number one, he's cool and calm in the pocket. And you said it best, Amber, he's taking shots down the football field. The reason why Cal Shanahan said we want Trey Lance, we want to go away from Jimmy G, is because Jimmy G was not taking any chances 
passes down the football field. And then here comes Brock Purdy, right? Throwing the ball all over the yard, taking shots down the football field to these big time playmakers, Brandon Ayuk. We've seen George Kittle, and that is opening up the run game. And Cal Shanahan is able to get to anything and everything he wants to get to with Brock Purdy under center. And there are a much better team and a better offense with Brock Purdy than Jimmy G, and it's proven. Did you see the stat at the bottom of the screen there that him and Hall of Famer Dan Marino are the only quarterback since 1950 with multiple touchdown passes Ooh. and a 100-plus passer rating mm. in their first three games? That's good company That's really to good be company. with. When we come back, we're going to break down this 49ers defensive front that the Raiders offense is facing. Josh McDaniels on going up against Nick Bosa and them boys. The Silver and Black Show is brought to you by Cox, proud partner of the Las Vegas Raiders. Allegiant, the official airline of the Las Vegas Raiders. Low fares, nonstop flights, book now only at Allegiant.com. 1800, the best taste in tequila and official partner of the Raiders. Second down, long seven, short eight. Nice block by the top, fumble again, recovered it looks like by San Francisco, it popped right up, as Heineke fumbled again, that's Bosa a fumble, knocks, that's yeah, a fumble. Bosa knocks the ball in the air, it's definitely not a pass. That's yeah. where their whole defense starts, is in the front, uh, we know that, our, our, our team knows that now, we've seen it now for a few days, and um, they play really hard, and so, it's going to be important for us to strike first in terms of when we get off the football, we're going to have to make contact. We're going to have to keep our hands inside. They're extremely well coached. They do a great job with their fundamentals and technique, and they play extremely hard. And when they're gassed or tired, then they're going to come out, and the next four are going to come in. And that group plays really well. Yeah. So they got depth. Uh, they're almost always fresh. Um, they got good rushers. They play the run well. Um, so this is going to be a big challenge for us, and, and people have done it. Uh, but you got to do it the right way. So the Raiders go up against the 49ers and their number one defense, J.J., and it is led by Nick Bosa, Defensive Player of the Year candidate. Many think that he is the shoe-in for that award. Yeah. Leads the league in sacks and going after a rookie quarterback, a young quarterback, not a rookie quarterback, but a fourth-year quarterback in Jarrett Stidham. Um, that's going to be tough for the Raiders. Yeah. And, and it don't matter who the quarterback is. It don't matter if it's Aaron Rodgers, Tom Brady. Here comes 97. 97 is unblockable. You know the way to block? Him, get the ball out of your hands fast. You know another way to block him? Run the football. But 97, he since he's come into the National Football League, he has been a game wrecker, and it has not changed. He is unblockable one-on-one. -on -one. So I am assuming Josh McDaniels, when we are on the offensive side of the ball, it's going to be plenty of running back chips. It's going to be plenty of tight ends on his side chipping to slow 97 down because if we allow him to get going, you see the numbers. Amber, it's going to be a tough day. He leads the league in sacks, as I said, 17 and a half. But hey, there's that guy named Max Crosby on the Raiders side as well that is also a defensive player of the year candidate leading the league with 19 tackles for loss. And look at their quarterback pressures. I mean, both of them just get after the quarterback. So could be a tough day for Brock Purdy and it could be a tough day for Jarrett Stenham. It's mm -hmm. going to be a great uh, defensive matchup there on both sides. And it's fun to always get to see two of the best in the NFL, two pro bowlers on the same field. And here's what Max Crosby said. He was asked. Do you have sort of this rivalry? You came into the same draft class with Nick Bosa. Do you have a rivalry? Here's what he said. You know, it's, it's funny, like, because both fan bases, you know, always talk about, for some reason, ever since my rookie year, you know, the Niners being from the Bay and Oakland as well. So, like, it automatically, like, people created this beef between me and Nick and, like, People send me stuff all the time, like Niner fans coming at me saying I suck, and I'm like, damn, I don't know what I did to y'all. I've never even played against y'all, but yeah, they they always come, you know, go back and forth about me and Nick. But um, it's funny, me and Nick are me and Nick have been boys ever since our rookie year. We talk all the time, um, and he's just been, you know, seeing what he's done in his career has been incredible. Um, and we came in together in the same draft. So um, watching him and seeing what he does gives me inspiration because I want to be the best. And, you know, he pushes me. I see him, what he's doing, and I'm like, okay, you're doing that. I, shit, I got to keep going hard. So, uh, yeah, I got a ton of respect for him. He's a great dude. And, uh, you know, I'm just proud of him for what he's done in his career so far. 
See, Max Crosby didn't know about the Battle of the Bay. Oh, People it's in Oakland real. People still remember that, mm-hmm. throwing back to the 49ers, uh, uh, Oakland Raider days. But now, he, of course, is Las Vegas. And, and Max Crosby in that defense is going to have to stop Christian McCaffrey, who came over in a trade from the Panthers in week eight. And since Ooh. then has been fire yeah. in a Kyle Shanahan mm-hmm. offense. Tough to stop that run. Yeah, and we're talking about a bad man. I mean, we know what he did in Carolina. But since he's come over here, I mean, the Niners are 8-0. I mean, they day near first in everything. I mean, Christian Cap- McCaffrey is one of the best running backs in the game. And it's not just running the ball in between the tackles. It's in the pass game as well. I mean, we've seen him throw touchdowns. We've seen him catch touchdowns. There's nothing that he can't do. And having him in the backfield on top of having George Kittle and Brandon Ayuk and those guys, it is a big, big problem. And that's why the Niners are having so much success on the offensive side of the ball because 23 can play at a very high level. This defense for the Raiders has their hands full, Amber. It's so versatile. You know, the way that Kyle Shanahan not only uses Christian McCaffrey uh, catching passes out of the backfield, as you said, but Debo Samuel, who we don't know if is going to play or not. He's Ooh. a receiver that can play as a back. It's just an expansive playbook, and it is a, it, it's tough for the Raiders' defense. They're going to have to be on point to stop this offense. Nobody has benefited, though, J.J., more than uh, more from Brock Purdy coming in than George Kittle. Yeah. Who would have thought that? Yeah. George Kittle, one of the best tight ends in the league, was having kind of a mediocre mm-hmm. year. And then then enter Brock Purdy, and all of a sudden he has had two weeks that are historical yeah. in the NFL. So going up against those safeties and the Raiders' defense, how's that matchup look? Yeah, Brock Purdy's a really smart kid because, I mean, if I came in to play quarterback for the San Francisco 49ers, I'm looking for 85 and 19 too. But, no, what? George Kittle has been going crazy since Brock Purdy has come in there, and the play designs are phenomenal too. So I'm looking at our safeties, right? If we have to play George Kittle man-to-man, I do not want to see our linebackers on a I want to see our safeties coming down to be able to run with George Kittle, to be able to make it tough on George Kittle because he will absolutely destroy any linebacker in the National Football League. So the matchup is our safeties on him because you're going to have to bring them down in the box, Amber, because you got to stop Christian McCaffrey. you got to stop the run game. So let the linebackers come down and tackle. Let the linebackers come down and hit. The safeties are in charge of George Kittle, and hopefully – They can slow him down. Remember I said the last two weeks he's been on fire. Look at Uh those numbers. And uh I mentioned the long touchdown receptions because a lot of that's yak too, right? Like yards after the catch. 25-plus yard receptions. The man has five in the last two weeks. So those big plays can absolutely kill you. And you mentioned it is going to be the safeties coming down to try to help out with George Kittle. But Curtis Bolton, Darian Butler, who is a rookie, and Luke Masterson, yeah. who is a rookie, will be starting yeah. with Denzel Perriman and Devon Diablo and them out. So that is, that's difficult in the middle of the field to have that many young guys going up against a guy like uh, George Kittle. Any, any advice for the young guys? Focus on one job. Don't give them too much to do. Stop the run. We will help you stop the pass. Stop the run. Do not worry about trying to stop George Kittle in the pass. Come downhill. Stop the run. Our safeties will be over the top to help you stop George Kittle. And just play fast and come down and hit. That's it. <laughs> Hope for divine intervention. All right. <laughs> that's all, that always helps. All right. Coming up next, we're going to talk to Luke Masterson. I sit down with him to talk about what's been a great rookie season for the Raiders linebacker. I'm here with uh, Luke Masterson, linebacker for the Raiders. And uh, Luke, an undrafted rookie out of Wake Forest. And now fast forward to just 17 weeks into the season. You're about to start your sixth NFL game. Uh, What was the first start for you like? I know you played before you got that first start, but that first start was against Indy, right? I mean, did you have any moment like, wow? Yeah, it was crazy. I I was lucky enough to play a little bit on special teams beforehand and a little bit on defense. So it wasn't my first time playing. But it is different starting and, uh, you know, being the guy. It was definitely a crazy experience and a lot to learn from that game and tried to, just like every week, learn from my mistakes and keep growing. If somebody would have told you when you were undrafted that you'd be starting uh, a few weeks into your NFL career, would you have believed? Probably not, no. It was a dream come true. And now, I mean, you've been balling the last two games. 21 total tackles in the last two games, two tackles for loss. What's clicking for you? I think I'm just trying to trust my coaches more. And, uh, you know, they do a great job every week of putting us in great positions and giving us a great game plan and just trusting them and uh, doing what we do in practice. Hey, set the tone. Yeah, yeah. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Set the tone. 
Dog! 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 You kind of came into a good situation with a lot of veterans on the defense. You had Denzel Perriman. Unfortunately, yeah. we're not going to see him again this season, but Deron Harmon also there. Who would you say is most instrumental in helping with your development, kind of taking you under their wing, whether it's a coach or a player on the yeah, defense? Yeah, everybody's been great. I mean, Denzel, obviously, Jayon, Diablo, when they were playing. Um, Deron's been great. I'm trying to take a little bit from everybody. Mm -hmm. um, that's one thing about this team is that all the veterans, you know, they're, they're willing to help. They, they treat you the same, whether you're a rookie, undrafted rookie, drafted rookie, whatever you are, um, they all want to help and help the team win, so it's been great. And has Max Crosby been instrumental at all? In Max is great. I think he's, he's one of the best leaders on the team. His energy is contagious every day. Um, he practices like a madman every day, and you see that on the field in game days. He's awesome. Now you guys go up against the 49ers. Yep. Hottest offense in the NFL right now, especially since week 14. They're averaging 31 points a game. Mm -hmm. What is the biggest challenge? You've been studying the film this week. The biggest challenge of going up against a Kyle Shanahan offense. Yeah, I mean, there's, they have a lot of dynamic players, first of all. But I think they do a lot to mess with your eyes. So a lot of it's pre-snap and post-snap movement. Um, so that's a big challenge for sure. McCaffrey, is that how you circle? Yeah, he's, he's a he big challenge Is he one of the most dangerous? Well. Yep, he's a big challenge. Because of the versatility, right? Yeah, he can do it all. Brock Purdy on the other side, by yep. the way. <laughs> he has a perfect passer rating right now when targeting George Kittle. George Kittle's just come to life since Brock Purdy, the rookie, yep. has come in. What makes Kittle hard to defend as a tight end? I mean, he's dynamic. He can block. He can run great routes as well. Um, he's definitely going to be a big challenge for us this week. Jones swings it out. Oh, nice First play. down. But it did not fool Luke Masterson. I saw you beat your chest after a, a tackle, a tackle for a loss against yeah. the Patriots. You get psyched up. Where does that swag come from? Where's that energy come from? I uh, just excited to make plays for my teammates and help the team win. Was there any linebacker that you studied growing up? Uh, Luke Keekley, a little bit, yeah. Wow, you just really dated yourself, or you uh, made me feel old. Luke <laughs> Keekley was who you looked up to, because yeah. he was. He was he was playing when you were coming up. What was it about him that you wanted to be like? Uh, he's just dynamic. He could do it all. He could uh, intercept passes, make tackles for losses. He was, he was a great player. Well, Luke, congratulations on a really strong rookie season. Looking Thank forward you. to a strong finish to the season. Thanks. The Silver and Black Show has been brought to you by Cox, proud partner of the Las Vegas Raiders. Allegiant, the official airline of the Las Vegas Raiders. Low fares, non-stop flights. Book now only at Allegiant.com. Chevron with Techron gives you unbeatable cleaning and mileage. Chevron, together ahead. Um, I mean, I know he's a talented thrower. Um, got it. We've seen him play before. I'm um, not just at the Senior Bowl, but um, I think we played him a couple years ago. Um, but he can make every throw similar to Carr in that way. Um, but he hasn't been out there a lot, so hopefully we'll confuse him, make it tough for him. I think overall, um, Max Crosby is, is really good uh, on the edge. So um, when they, whenever they have you know a player like that that you have to focus on, they can do a lot of other different things um, that you can sometimes um, slip up and and not be ready for in terms of what they do with their secondary and, and their backers and whatnot. But um, I think they're talented across the board. Um, but for us, like we're just focusing on what we have to do to get better and get right for this week and uh, work on little things and habits and details that we want to clean up. So uh, it's going to be a really good challenge for us going into a really good environment. And uh, they got a, they got a solid team all around. So. Whoever said that Mr. Irrelevant is irrelevant was wrong because Brock Purdy has gone 3-0 as a starter of the 49ers, going up against the Raiders' defense. Also, I wanted to make a point, the, the 49ers' offense, the interior offensive line was completely new this year. They've done a really good job, especially with a young rookie behind them, and now they're going up against the Raiders, which is a tough defensive front as well. But, uh, JJ, the Raiders are still alive. You're they're still alive. I'm telling you're you there is a chance. chance. If the Raiders handle their yeah. business, they get a win against the 49ers. Going into week 18, <clears throat> they will still be alive if, I'll keep it very simple, I know this is very wordy, the Dolphins lose to the Patriots, which is, which is possible mm -hmm. because they got Teddy Bridgewater going out there. They don't have Tua. And the Jets lose to the Seahawks. That game is in Seattle. Yeah. You've probably played in Seattle yes, at I this have. time of year. It is very loud. It's difficult to play. They have Mike White, the starter for the Jets. So if those two things happen, these are two teams that have lost four games in a row each. So yeah. they're trending and, and downward. This is, this is good for the Raiders. And number one, 
We have to handle our business. That's the very, that's the first thing we have to do. Win the game. Don't look up at the scoreboards and jumbotrons and all that, trying to see what the scores are to the game. Win the game, all right? The Patriots, really good defense. They are going to make it really, really hard on Teddy Bridgewater. I could see the Patriots winning that ball game. And you going out there to Seattle. We know. It should be hand signals in the hallways right now because you're not going to be able to hear nothing out there in Seattle. Mm -hmm. Geno Smith, pro bowler, he has not rolled back yet. Geno say you coming to my house. Mm -hmm. I can see both these things happening. But we got to handle our business. And if we do, Week 18. Jared Stidham could be going into Week 18 oh, for Las my Vegas goodness. Raiders with a chance. Um, but it's going to be bumping at Allegiant Stadium. You know why? Mm. Because Raiders Talk fans, Ice Cube Talk and to Too Short Talk are going to, to the halftime show. Look at them. Look at hey. them. Man, that brings back some memories. West Coast love huh. going way back. Two Raiders fans. I can't wait to see both of them. I wonder what they're going to open with. Dun 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 <laughs> dun dun. dun. I don't know. I think, I think perhaps maybe Ice Cube redoes the words to straight out of Compton, yeah. straight out you, of Las Vegas. You might come know. out with some gangster stuff. We playing the Niners. <laughs> we might need to come out with some gangster stuff and let everybody know that we up in this thing. Man. I can tell you one thing. I hope they don't have cameras in the press box. Oh, it's going down. I'm thinking we 1996. We turned up. A big radio like back in the day. We turned up. We're going to have a good time. All right, you guys are going to have a good time. Get there early. 105 kickoff at Allegiant Stadium. It is the Raiders and the 49ers. Both teams still alive in the playoffs. We'll see you guys right after the game right here on Raiders game day. Have a good weekend.